Hey, so go grab your brother and bring him inside. It's time to go to bed. You guys get a busy day tomorrow. Kevin, time for bed. Looking at the moon? Looking for Mercury. Mercury? I can only see a couple of stars. Well, Mercury's a planet, and it's definitely up there. You can only see it at dawn or dusk. And that's not all. There are a lot more planets out there that you or I could ever count. Can you even see a planet out of that piece of junk? Even the most powerful telescopes have difficulty seeing planets. Sorry. I want to know why. Okay, Sonny. Picture this. We can only see a few planets from Earth with our own eyes. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. To see the rest of the planets in our solar system, astronomers needed telescopes. Now, the planets do not orbit the Sun in perfect alignment. With our telescope technology today, we can see billions of stars inside our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and beyond that, billions of galaxies, each with billions of stars. With billions of planets and moons? Well, scientists think so, but with today's technology, we've just begun to find new planets. Why so few? Let me show you. There are too many obstructions. Clouds, dust, pollution. Especially the lights we use make it very difficult to search for planets away from Earth. We need to get up high to see above it all. We need to get out of Earth's atmosphere in order to see everything. I want to go. In 2008, NASA launched the Kepler satellite to search for exoplanets, or planets outside of our solar system. It's an amazing feat of engineering. What is Kepler? <laughs> you mean who is Kepler? Johannes Kepler was an astronomer who lived in the 17th century. Back then, telescopes were a new technology, and he was the first to explain how the optics of a telescope works. With telescopes, Kepler was able to plot how planets move around the sun. He was the first to explain that planets move in elliptical orbits, not perfect circles. He even coined the term satellite. When you put all those things together, it explains why NASA named the mission after him. The Kepler telescope orbits around the Sun looking for Earth-like planets that orbit distant stars within our galaxy. Hundreds of new planets have been found, and new techniques are being refined to find more and more. What does it see? Kepler can see distant stars light years away. But we can't see planets directly because they are lost in the bright glare of the star's light. Wait, if we can't see them, how can we see them? Scientists have figured out ways to interpret what the telescope sees in order to detect or find planets. One way to see them is to measure a planet's transit. Like a transit bus driving through town. <laughs> it's, it's similar. A transit happens any time a planet crosses in front of its star. When a planet crosses in front of the star, as viewed by the satellite, it's called a transit. Transits by planet-sized objects measure slight changes in a star's brightness. Really small, like one ten-thousandth of the time the planet is in transit. If this transit repeats, lasting the same amount of time with the same amount of brightness, we can reason we're watching a planet cross in front of the star. Using techniques like this, scientists have found a planet orbiting our nearest star, Proxima Centauri. Now, if we could travel to the star and change our perspective, this is what we'd see. When do we leave? Well, not so fast. We have to make sure it's safe. Not every planet can support life. Even if the planet does have water, if it's too close to its sun, the water will boil. Too far away and the water freezes solid. If they are in this middle zone, we call it a Goldilocks planet. Not too hot, not too cold. Just right. Well, if it's just right, does that mean we can go there? Yes. Well, not, not exactly. Even though light is the fastest thing in the universe, it still takes light four years to get there. With our technology, it would take us 20,000 years to get to Proxima Centauri. Well, we better get started. We don't have a moment to lose. <laughs> nice. Where have you been? Get in the car. I'm sorry, Dad. We got carried away. You two always with your heads in the clouds. Ha <laughs> <laughs>